What's going on everyone, it's Super here and welcome back to another Injustice 2 video. Now today I'm going to be talking about one of the DLC characters that got revealed on Friday morning for Injustice 2. The first guest character that has gotten revealed so far which is Sub-Zero from Mortal Kombat and for you guys who are new to my channel maybe subbed recently maybe have subbed in the last couple of months when I started covering a lot more Injustice 2 for you guys who don't know I actually uh, started uploading fighting games again on my channel with Mortal Kombat X and it's been my primary game it's been my primary source of you know content that I've created here on my channel for the last two years and I absolutely love Mortal Kombat. I love the franchise since Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. So Sub-Zero is, uh, you know, special in my heart. I love Sub-Zero. Uh, he's one of my favorite classic ninjas. Uh, I actually really like the classic ninjas, like all of them. And by classic, I mean more Mortal Kombat Trilogy is like the latest one that I'll go to. So I'll give you guys like Rain, Noob Saibot, Reptile, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Ermac. And Smoke. Those are like my definition of classic ninjas. Then you have like Chameleon and, you know, Tremor. Stuff like that. Um, but I'm very happy that Sub-Zero is going to be a character in the game like Injustice 2. Now, of course, we all know Sub-Zero being ultra-violent because he comes from Mortal Kombat. Um, but Scorpion, I think, had a really, really fun playstyle in the first Injustice game. He was actually one of my favorite characters to play because I sort of understood his game, st uh, his game style, his gameplay right away. He was one of, uh, I think he was the first character that I picked in Injustice to sort of learn the game because... He was very Mortal Kombat-esque, and I never played Injustice up until, like, uh, sometime last year uh, when it came out for PS4. And, you know, it was very easy to pick up Injustice because of, like, my background playing Mortal Kombat and Scorpion. So I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about Sub-Zero here and talk about, I guess, his gameplay prediction talk about his design and all that good stuff so if you guys uh, are happy as well that Sub-Zero's in Injustice as one of the you know potentially one of the Mortal Kombat characters leave a like rating on the video it's always appreciated um, and let me know what you guys think uh, Sub-Zero's gameplay is gonna be like but I want to talk about his design first because it was confirmed via Ed Boon's Twitter that the legendary Jim Lee designed Sub-Zero's costume. Jim Lee, comic book legend, and he uh, designed Scorpion's costume in the first Injustice game as well. As you guys know, uh, the Injustice Scorpion costume is so good. Like, I really, really like the design. It's the only Scorpion costume that I use in Mortal Kombat X. So, naturally, uh, the Sub-Zero design looks a little bit similar especially with the uh you know with the hoodie on and with the mask it looks very similar to what injustice scorpion had but of course he went on a totally different route because there are two different characters on sub-zero's like body and it's really cool that he has like icicles sticking out of uh sub-zero's like arms kind of reminds me of cryomancer sub-zero because cryomancer sub-zero actually has uh, you know his arms are like uh, covered in ice they're like frozen uh, so I think that design choice is really cool um, it, it adds a little bit extra having you know the little spikes icicles popping out it actually looks like something that would be very useful in combat uh, so I can't wait to see this uh, design actually in the game and actually brightened up the close-up of Sub-Zero so you guys could like take a look at the design how it's going to look more in game because of course we're in a dark tunnel here it, it sort of washes away the blue and like the uh the actual color in the costume uh so i think it looks way better once light actually hits it so design 10 out of 10 of course jim lee come on man the uh Jim Lee X-Men are the quintessential X-Men that everyone thinks of whenever they think of Cyclops, Wolverine, all the classic X-Men. They think about Jim Lee. So I really love the design. Now let's move on to some gameplay. 
All right, here we go. The interesting, the most interesting thing, obviously, because we're going to be fighting with Sub Zero. So, number one, and we have to talk about this because uh, this is pretty much the most iconic thing that Sub Zero has, which is the Ice Clone. Now, the Ice Clone has been around forever, and they could go either one of two routes. They could go with his Ice Clone just being a regular move, you know, just like Mortal Kombat X. You summon the Ice Clone, you know, if your opponent touches it, he gets frozen, and you could throw the Ice Clone. So they could go in that route, keep it simple. Or they could make the Ice Clone his trait and make different variations of Ice Clones or, you know, do something unique with the Ice Clone. We're going to have to wait and see what they do because Sub-Zero could go in another route with his trait, which I'll be talking about a little bit later. But the Ice Clone is going to be there no matter what. It's like Sub-Zero's iconic thing, you know, the Ice Clone. It's changed from game to game. Uh, I'm thinking more recently for Mortal Kombat X, you know, the clone is just a straight up Ice Clone. Like he's just standing like a statue. But in different games like Mortal Kombat 9, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, uh, Sub-Zero could actually uh, summon his Ice Clone in wherever he was. So if he was like jumping back, he could summon the Ice Clone of himself like jumping back. And, you know, uh, if he's in like mid-animation of jumping back, that's where the Ice Clone would stay. Uh, same thing goes if he's crouching or if he's, um, you know, a little bit lower to the ground. The Ice Clone would sort of mimic that stance that Sub-Zero's at whenever you summon the Ice Clone. Uh, so, I don't know what route they're going to go with. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to go with the more modern route. Uh, that's the safer route, in my opinion. I think the Ice Clone being able to be summoned no matter what, like, in in different, like, positions, makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, so, for sure, the Ice Clone is going to be there. Uh, one very big hint that we got for his gameplay is his swords. His Ice Swords, his Ice Dagger... Those are coming back from Mortal Kombat X and his Cryomancer variation. So I think it's pretty safe to say that a lot of his normals are going to involve him, you know, punching people going and then going into his dagger or sword combos like he does for MKX. You know, he's probably going to have some meterless launchers, stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if all his moves are going to involve the sword because he, he could definitely have some good range if he has like a, a an ice sword at his disposal to start off a combo so like robin for example he has amazing range he has a lot of really good mids i could tell he's going to be a character who's going to control mid space based on what i played of him in the um you know early access events and if sub-zero has something similar with his ice sword then it's definitely going to give sub-zero a lot more range than he normally has in you know especially in Mortal Kombat X uh, other than like his back two which is an overhead uh, like a swinging overhead attack he doesn't have too much range uh, so let's see of course you know you have to have a nice ball right uh, so Captain Cold is you know one of the big reasons why a lot of people didn't think that Sub-Zero is gonna make it anymore is because Captain Cold is in the game and he's another character that uses you know ice as his weapon his uh, you know freeze gun and he has a lot of different moves, but Captain Cold is more of a setup character. He's more of a keep away setup character. You want your opponent in the corner so you can start your overhead low mix ups. And he has a lot more, uh, I guess, layers of gameplay to himself than some something like Sub Zero. You know, Sub Zero is like a brawler. He wants to be in your face. He's not much of a zoning character. Ice Ball's always been slow. He just wants to be in your face, freeze you, and you know, control space with the Ice Clone. So those are like two different play styles. I can definitely tell that, you know, comparing the two. Now that I've played with Captain Cold, uh, they're definitely not going to play identical. So Ice Ball definitely is going to make it, probably gonna be his main source of uh, combo potential. I don't know if the regular one is gonna knock down and the meter burn version is going to freeze the opponent. I don't think so, he'll probably have multiple ways to combo you including like a regular ice ball which is going to be really beneficial for sub-zero because there's a lot of characters that need to spend meter to actually get combos so if he has like a regular ice ball that you could connect from a combo it's going to give him a huge advantage right there meterless launcher 
Um, so another move that I think is going to be returning from MKX is his Ice Burst, where he likes punches the ground and he, you know, summons like a burst of ice around himself. It has a nice hitbox, and the meter burn version one is probably going to launch the opponent just like it does in Mortal Kombat X. Now this move, I don't know if it's going to make it because this is something very, 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 very similar to what Captain Cold has, which is uh, the Ice Puddle. So in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, Sub-Zero would freeze the ground and the opponent would sort of be sliding in place so you could get a combo. I don't know if that's going to be coming back since, like I mentioned, Captain Cold has something like almost identical except for instead of sliding, Captain Cold actually freezes you when he meter burns the Ice Puddle. So just decided to write that down. Don't know if that one's going to make it. Of course, he has to have a wake up. You know, Sub-Zero always had his, uh, his Icy Slide, so that's definitely coming back. We'll see what the meter burn version does and actually have, uh, you know, an idea from if they decide to go with this specific trade, which I'll be talking about right now from Mortal Kombat X. So moving on to the Ice Aura. Now, this is something that the unbreakable variation of Sub-Zero has in Mortal Kombat X. And what it is, is he summons a sort of aura of ice around his body and he takes less damage and it also negates any chip damage and whenever you do your meter burn slide if you're still in aura form it actually freezes the opponent in midair so the ice aura is definitely something that i could see as sub-zero's trait for sure because it has multiple utilities you know it negates chip damage it uh it negates uh, about 50% damage. You take 50% le uh, less damage. Uh, it lasts a pretty good amount of time. And if you do a meter burn slide, it actually freezes your opponent. So that would be like a, a really good uh, way to incorporate the meter burn slide with the trait. If they decide to go that route, you know, if you slide and it hits the opponent, you spend the extra bar of meter and the meter burn slide could only be meter burn whenever you're in trait and then if obviously if you hit the opponent when you're in trait with the meter burn slide you actually launch them and freeze them in place so that's definitely something that could be incorporated into sub-zero's game if they decide to go with the ice aura as a trait so other than that i think that's about it it would be cool if he had his command grab from mortal kombat x because it you know having a command grab as a character especially if you have 50 50 options which for you guys who don't know means overhead or low combo starters including a command grab in there it becomes really scary so i would like to see sub-zero's command grab in crown mancer return but that's gonna be the end of today's video this was a lot of fun man just thinking about the possibilities of sub-zero uh has me really excited and i haven't even started talking about the gear and the different palette swap ninjas that we're going to be able to see. I'll definitely make a separate video on that. But that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time. What's going on guys? It's Super here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you guys subscribe or check out any of these videos linked at the top. Thank you and I will see you guys next time.